Hi, this is Carolyn Kinnane at the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, USA. And this is the first in a series of eight videos outlining the contemplative pause and how it might relate to course design, including some activities for students and exercises for instructors. I uh, hope you feel free to use this information and adapt it to your context and to your own learning goals. And also please reach out with any comments or questions. I'm eager to improve my thinking on this and look forward to hearing from you. So you may be familiar with this idea and the experience of a stimulus and a response, and you may even be familiar with the idea of the contemplative pause. This is the space between the stimulus and the response. And to me, this process can often feel more like a stressor and a reaction, where I react from autopilot, from habits and beliefs that no longer serve me, which is an exhausting way to live, but also down the road gets me living out of alignment with my values, which causes even more stress. And so I'm going to break down that contemplative pause a little bit to demonstrate some options for what could occur in that space. And what I'm offering is just one version of what happens here informed by my own positionality, my fields of study, the nature of my practice and my contexts. So I offer this exploration as a description, not a prescription. And you may notice that these steps share some aspects of the RAIN meditation, R-A-I-N meditation as described in Ruth King's Mindful of Phrase book or in Rhonda McGee's The Inner Work of Racial Justice. So the first step in my contemplative pause is awareness. Here is where I simply notice non-judgmentally right here and right now. So I think of this as gathering data. So for example, if I get an email from someone who um, I have some professional troubles with, I may notice that there's heat rising in my body. I may notice a tightness in my chest. I may notice that my pride gets triggered. So noticing non-judgmentally what's happening with me in the moment helps me notice my habits and my current practices and bring awareness to them. This is related to metacognition and mindfulness. So I'd invite you to maybe pause and check in. What are you doing right now? Are you here? Are you somewhere else? How does your body feel? What is going on with you? Simply notice non-judgmentally. The next step in my contemplative pause is inquiry. Here is where I check in with my values and my intentions and I ask some questions. This is where I practice open awareness, reflection, critical inquiry. And I ask, is this how I want to be? Is this the most effective way to be considering my values and goals? So I inquire, how is it that I want to be? What are my intentions for being here? I may learn that I wish to respect my colleague, that I wish to be brave and stick up for myself, that I wish to do the best work possible. Checking in. So I invite you to do some inquiry. How do you want to be? What is your intention for being here, for listening to this video? And I encourage you to keep the focus on yourself. How is it that you want to be rather than what do you want me to tell you? Do you hope to be curious or open-minded or flexible? The next step in a contemplative pause is presence. So here is getting present with what is. I look around, I notice context. Some people call this seeing things as they are, but I prefer to think of it as seeing with fresh eyes. So having noticed what's going on with me and my mind and my body, my habitual ways of being, my pride, my um, constriction, I return to that email and I see what else is happening outside the narrative of myself. I bring some non-judgmental noticing to what my colleague is saying to the situation at hand. And so um, I invite you, if you'd like, to maybe take a look at your screen, take a look at the area around it. Maybe notice if you have multiple tabs open, if you are getting email alerts, simply noticing maybe what's happening around the screen or around your environment. The next step is discernment. Here is where I do some informed evaluation. I make some judgments. So after performing some inquiry, I have learned what this moment calls for. I have learned what is needed. 
I have learned what will serve my intentions and my goals for this experience. And I decide how to make this experience an opportunity for myself to live with integrity. Here is where I make a choice. I decide I'm not going to respond to that email right now. I'm going to go get a snack. I'm going to take a walk. Maybe I'm going to draft a response, but I'm going to send it to a trusted colleague for some input before I do anything about it. And so I invite you, what is it that you need to do right now to live in alignment with your values and to live with your intentions for our time together here? The next step is not part of the contemplative pause. It is taking the action, going and getting a drink, drafting the email, whatever the action might be, and then reflection, checking back, how did it go? So this may be, uh, this process maybe took six or seven minutes or so. We don't always have that amount of time, or maybe we have that time, but uh, I don't take it, for example, with email. And so the space and the time of this contemplative pause can decrease with practice. I can practice awareness and presence through mindfulness, meditation, or other contemplative practices. I can develop a habit of reflection through deep listening with a partner or journaling. And so the context and practice informs how long this contemplative pause can take. So um, up next in the series will be the contemplative pause in course design. So thank you so much for your time. <laughs>